Well, I didn't actually think I'd be making a video about this, but it appears there's a very real possibility the Starliner crew flight test astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, may end up returning from the International Space Station on a SpaceX Dragon capsule. For those who did not like my last Starliner video about the crew not being stuck, which I published at the beginning of July, what I reported was accurate to the best of my knowledge when it was published. In fact, I even said this. If there were any serious issues with Starliner, there would have been signs of NASA prepping a backup plan, like preparing a Dragon capsule. As new information came in over the last month, it turns out NASA has been quietly doing studies and making contingency preparations for such a possibility. The agency finally went into details about these plans in a media teleconference on August 7th, 2024, two months into Starliner's mission, a mission that was supposed to last a minimum of eight days. What are those plans? What is the current status of the flight rationale for undocking Starliner? And what does this mean for the future of the Starliner program? If you're new here, I'm Derek, a journalist who's been writing about space for nearly a decade. My channel, Orbital Velocity, explores humanity's ongoing trek toward a multiplanetary future with engaging, accurate content for all, from casual observers to passionate space enthusiasts. If you like space and want to follow humanity's journey to the stars, consider subscribing, and don't forget to launch that like button into orbit. So my last video didn't age well, I'll be the first to admit that. Like a good journalist, I report the information to the best of my ability with the information that I have at the time. When the situation changes, you report the changes. I'm not actively hoping for Starliner to fail, nor am I denying the very real problems that Starliner has had to deal with and fix. This program is a mess. However, I do believe we should all be hoping for the program to get its act together, because having two commercial orbital spacecraft is one of the key points of the commercial crew program. Dissimilar redundancy. As reliable as Crew Dragon is, we cannot rely solely on SpaceX for access to low Earth orbit. There very well may come a time when Dragon or the Falcon 9 has an issue that could cause a multi-month or multi-year stand down, just like during the space shuttle program. Spaceflight is risky. It doesn't have airliner levels of safety. And if a bad day does come, then having alternative access to space will be critical to getting to low Earth orbit and the ISS or whatever commercial space stations we have in the future. Now, what has happened since my last video? Remember, after Starliner launched on June 6th, it suffered several small helium leaks. During rendezvous with the ISS the next day, five of the Service Module's 28 reaction control system thrusters shut down unexpectedly. These were all aft-facing RCS thrusters, the ones that spent the most time facing the sun. Ground teams were able to get four of those failed thrusters back online, and Butch and Sunny successfully docked to the station several hours later. Subsequent orbital testing has shown the helium leak rates are reduced and stable, and the 27 remaining thrusters are all working within nominal margins. Over the month of July, NASA and Boeing conducted several tests on a thruster in White Sands, New Mexico, in order to replicate the flight conditions when the orbital Starliner made its way to the ISS. I won't get into detail about how the tests were performed. I'll put a link to the Boeing update in the description below. But basically, Boeing thinks the root cause of the thruster issues appear to be from excessive thermal heating in the service module's doghouses. They may ultimately be causing one or more oxidizer poppet valves to deform, expand, and extrude into the propellant pathway, interfering with oxidizer flow. There are four doghouses around the circumference of Starliner's service module. These pod-like features contain seven reaction control system thrusters, and five Orbital Maneuvering and Attitude Control, or OMAC, system thrusters. The OMAC thrusters are what Starliner uses to slow itself down to return to Earth. Starliner hasn't had any issues with OMAC thrusters during this mission. The rear of the doghouse, which is insulated, is where most of the thrusters are clustered. There are three OMAC and two RCS thrusters. And because Starliner's solar panels are at the rear of the service module, it is usually pointing toward the sun. For a variety of reasons, it appears the heat isn't being removed as efficiently as needed inside the doghouses, and when you have aggressive thruster pulses, that heat has nowhere to go. In addition to the heating causing the poppet seals to expand, if it gets hot enough, some of the propellant can actually turn to vapor, which can reduce thruster performance. All of which can contribute to thrusters not performing as expected and shutting down, which does seem to explain what's going on. The problem is, that's what Boeing thinks is happening it can't be 100% guaranteed that that's what's actually happening in orbit. NASA says engineers don't yet fully understand the physics behind all of this, and it has been difficult to replicate conditions on the ground. 
There's a concern among some that, although a very, very unlikely scenario, this same phenomenon could affect the OMAC thrusters, which are used to deorbit the vehicle. Now, this is a very, very remote possibility, but the fact that the Boeing team cannot be 100% sure of the root cause of the thruster problems and its physics, there are some at NASA that would rather err on the side of caution. Also during the month of July, there were trickling and contradicting reports of several task orders being given to SpaceX for contingency plans for astronaut return. NASA initially said these were not related to Starliner, but in the August 7th press conference, all was revealed. The first task order was indeed not for Starliner. It was for NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, who launched to the ISS in a Russian Soyuz back in March. They wanted to look at alternative ways to bring her home in the event there was another coolant link similar to what happened in late 2022 and 2023 with another Soyuz spacecraft. This would presumably involve her in a Russian so-called launch and entry suit sitting in a foam liner in the cargo pallet beneath the four seats inside of a Dragon. So technically NASA denying this was for Starliner was true. From a certain point of view. But then the agency said there was also a task order for SpaceX to look at modifying the upcoming Crew-9 mission to fly with only two people, using the other two seats to carry ballast, such as pressure suits for Butch and Suni. In this scenario, Butch and Suni would remain at the ISS until Crew-9 returns in mid-February of 2025. NASA said SpaceX completed the initial part of the work, but the final part would be to configure the vehicle for this mission scenario and complete crew training, something that has not been given the go-ahead. Finally, a third task order was given to SpaceX in the event that Starliner has to be undocked first in an uncrewed configuration. That would mean Butch and Suni would still be on the space station. The task order was looking at the possibility of allowing up to three additional crew members to return in a Dragon spacecraft in their respective pressure suits sitting on a foam liner. Within NASA, there is a healthy debate on the best path forward. Boeing is confident in its hardware, but some at NASA prefer a more conservative approach. This debate is complicated by the unique situation of having two U.S. vehicles to choose from for crew transportation. NASA said with the current information, reasonable people can have different views on which path to take. Return the crew on Starliner or Dragon. There is no consensus with the data as of yet. Because of these disagreements as to how and when to return Starliner to Earth, NASA has reorganized the flights to the ISS once again to provide more time. Before, Crew-9 was to launch with four people on August 19th, docking a day later. Crew-8 and its four astronauts would have returned on August 30th. But this scenario requires NASA to have Starliner undocked and returned home, crew or not. To give teams more time to address the risk for multiple scenarios, the new schedule calls for Crew-9 to launch on September 24th. This deconflicts the Station Visiting Vehicle Manifest with the upcoming Soyuz crew rotation planned between September 11th and 24th. Additionally, if NASA and Boeing opt to return Starliner to Earth uncrewed, they'll have to spend time updating the parameters of the vehicle's software to allow for an uncrewed flight home. It is capable of doing so. It did so during the OFT-2 mission in 2022. Currently, if there's a failure during the undocking, the software defaults to a crew capability. For an uncrewed version, those parameters need to be changed to let the system make the decision. This will need to be verified by Boeing at a test facility before uploading the new parameters. Also, additional training will be required with the flight control team on the ground. If Starliner returns uncrewed, here is how the sequence of events would likely unfold. First, Butch and Suni would move their pressure suits to the Crew-8 Dragon and be prepared to return to Earth in the cargo pallet on top of a foam liner should an emergency occur. Next, Starliner undocks and lands in New Mexico, hopefully safely. Crew-9 would then launch with only two people and suits and supplies for Butch and Suni. Crew-9 will dock at the port that Starliner is currently occupying, and Butch and Suni will move their suits from Crew-8 into the Crew-9 spacecraft. Crew-8 will then undock and return to Earth with its original crew members. Crew-9 with two crew members, as well as Butch and Suni, will remain on the ISS until February of 2025 before returning to Earth. Something similar happened to Frank Rubio when his Russian Soyuz spacecraft ride had to be replaced because of a coolant leak. His stay on the space station went from six months to more than a year. The silver lining in all this for Butch and Suni is that they would get to spend an extra six months in space on top of the two they've already experienced for this flight. They would also be the first people to fly in both commercial crew spacecraft. NASA stressed in the conference that they have not given the go for this contingency mission yet, but everything is open and on the table. They expect to make a decision by mid-August. 
While more tests may be done, NASA and Boeing are getting more people to look at the data from Starliner and its ground tests. During a flight readiness review for undocking and landing, they will make a recommendation. If there are still a number of dissenting opinions, then a final decision will go to NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free, and ultimately all the way up to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. So we still don't know for sure when or how Butch and Suni are coming back to Earth, but I do believe NASA is putting the crew's safety first. We wouldn't be having these conversations if that weren't the case. As pointed out by NASA, this is the first time in the history of spaceflight at the ISS where two different US crew vehicles are docked, and that adds to the discussion. If Boeing can't find a sufficient root cause for the problems of the service module to get a good flight rationale, and you have a perfectly good alternative ride home, why take the risk? Now there are also risks in doing the contingencies too, but NASA has to weigh one risky proposition with another. But this is also an opportunity to put into place contingency plans for any vehicle going forward. For example, someday SpaceX's Dragon could have an issue requiring Starliner to rescue astronauts. I want to be clear though, as of this video's publication, no decisions have been made as to how Bush and Sunni will come home. This story is still being written, and when you watch this, things may be different. Right now, the path forward for Starliner involves completing the current test flight, ideally with crew aboard it for re-entry, but if not, send them home on another vehicle. When Starliner returns, it needs to finish any remaining items for certification, and when on the ground, these issues with the service module have to absolutely be fixed before the next flight, whether it's another certification flight or a crew rotation flight. Despite these challenges, having two crew transportation systems remains essential for NASA's future missions. If Starliner fails or is canceled, then in my opinion, the entire premise of the commercial crew program fails. What do you think about Starliner's current situation, and how do you think NASA should be communicating these issues? Be nice, but let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and as always, at Astra.